have a lesson and discussion on this work, follow the lesson for free and just pick up all the tips from the video for free. But if you're interested, I do have a sheet music edition of all 25 etudes in Carcassi's Opus 60, and there's a link for that in the description. So etude number 24 is, is approaching the late intermediate or early advanced level. So when I start to teach uh, pieces at this level, I'm um, doing walkthroughs and, and, and stuff like that. It starts to become less important. It's, it's really much more about making sure that the student is, is prepared for the piece and they're ready to play something at this level. This particular work is not, is not outrageously, you know, it's not fast. So it's not that it's, it's that difficult, but there are a lot of chord changes and shapes to deal with and navigation of the fretboard. So it's just, it's quite mature in its level. So just make sure that you've worked your way up to this piece. In regards to the tempo, I had a, I had a little bit of a tricky time choosing a tempo for this piece. In, in one way, I wanted to go quite slow. It says Andantino with expression. Um, I wanted to go quite slow and be super expressive. like maybe it was just dragging a little bit and wasn't pushing through the composition enough so um, you could go really fast and push through and get and make it more crisp in its rhythmic delivery Um, that has a certain effect. But then I started to feel like, oh, it's just not quite expressive enough. It's, it felt just too, like, Baroque or something like that. So um, what I, I, I chose the middle ground. Uh, I tried to make it kind of expressive, but I tried to push through the phrases as well. You know, linger a little bit and get sustained. But don't um, don't linger so long that it starts to drag too much. Um, and it's definitely a piece that doesn't lend itself particularly well to like a small room like this. It, it would sound really great in a concert hall where everything's reverberating so beautifully, right? But I think that's uh, that's the first thing is just choosing that that correct tempo, making sure that especially at the ends of phrases or like when you arrive at at, um, at a destination point. You know that you get a certain amount of sustain out of the note and you're not clipping anything, even at the end of the accompaniment chords. Getting enough sustain that it's not like, you know, it's not getting cut off early or anything like that. So just, yeah, choosing the right tempo, making sure you have a nice sustain on the notes that so that you're lingering um, with expression but not so much that you're dragging the composition down and, and not pushing forward. But I think let's just do a, a walk through the piece and we'll just discuss a couple of the things that come up in it. Um, Actually, before we begin, I'll just say, like, in terms of the rest of the etudes in the collection, this is dives away quite a bit. This doesn't have as clear of a, a um, pedagogical uh, didactic purpose. It's it's just it's it's at the end of the collection. It's feeling much more like a full composition um, and not like a didactic study necessarily. Certainly, you can always relate it to um, a melodic study. There's lots of beautiful shaped melodic lines both in the upper voice and lower voice so working on your legato and your sustain um, and phrasing uh, is certainly a part of the piece but i think it's just it's more just like he's presenting a, a more mature composition with much more mature expression in this particular case fairly you know romantic in its nature um for for students to do after all those didactic studies that you've done where now it's time to showcase some of your mature musical skills. So, but let's let's do a walkthrough and just discover any oddity fingerings and, and other considerations. I detach that slightly, but not so much that it's like, maybe at a real fast tempo I would detach them a lot, but I'm just kind of, 
slight detachment with sustain on the final chord. Enjoy those non-chord tones on the beat. And then resolve them. So it's always like... And then resolve. this I stay in upper positions partly just because you could shift down after that but when you do the when you go on to the next section you're, you're playing up here so I just kind of I'm just kind of keeping my hand up in that position it's probably not how Carcassi played it but um, I made that choice for that particular chord there then it says animato, and I consider this is a new section, so when you repeat this section, you're coming back to this animato. And so it's just a little bit more animated. It's the same tempo, but it's just like you're going to have a little bit more push. Well, lots of like first finger um, noodling about, so just try to keep that legato as possible. Um. So you're getting an opportunity to phrase in the bass a little bit there. get that note don't short change that upper note too much it's really tempting to play it right in time and go but you don't want to clip it either it's kind of a sweet moment just calmly go back down is mostly just a return uh, to that opening section. So you play through that, you get to the repeat, and then you go back to the animato at measure 9 there. So there's no repeat sign on the inside because that's kind of, I'm kind of considering it not a multi-movement but like an introduction plus and then the animato. So you repeat back to there. When you go on to uh, measure 29, the second ending, Um, you just have to be, you know, quite prepared for that um, that change there, and that you're going to be moving on from that figure. So I stay in this upper position and use the open strings along with those fretted notes there because of all of this material. There's one figuring that I might consider changing in my edition. It's this one here. If you actually use first finger, you can grab the chord with those fingers. I have two written just because it's in position. Um, but then you have to kind of lift that up. It actually doesn't make a huge difference because it's such a big shift. But maybe in retrospect I would change that one fingering <laughs> from the whole 25 etudes, that one finger right there, one tiny one. First finger, that way you can grab the chord. So lots of jumping about there and plenty of opportunity to clip, but just make sure you're sustaining the notes. Um, you, you try to stay in time, but you can use a little bit of rubato there just to make sure. So 
So you can tell I'm like, I'm elongating that just ever so slightly so I sustain it nicely and don't clip too much, right? Clip the sound. There, I, I know that's a little bit of a funny fingering in measure 37. Third finger, that way you can grab that though. Really nice piece by Carcassi, and if you've been playing all of the etudes and you've played all his didactic, like pedagogical etudes up to this point, you'll be a little bit surprised by this piece because it has almost a Beethovenian or further romantic kind of feel to it, and um, it, the, the level of composition is just a little bit um, higher quality than than what you've seen so far with all the pedagogical kind of material in the previous etudes, so. It's a very welcome etude in that regard. And there's nothing particularly awkward or difficult about it, but because it navigates so much of the guitar and there's so many shapes and so um, just so, so much um, close attention in every measure to the musicality, I placed it at a pretty high grade level, um, you know, early advanced or at least late intermediate. Uh, so beware of it because it seems like it should be fairly easy and doable, but I, you know, there's quite a bit to pay attention to. So as always with, with a work like this, that isn't particularly awkward in any way. Um, you just have to pour a lot more time into it to really know it and to know the shapes and to know where you're shifting and know what's happening in the composition. But also it's, it's kind of mature in its own way that choosing a tempo and, and choosing your articulation and your phrasing there's a lot of work to be done in that regard, music, musical work to be done in this piece compared to maybe some of the other compositions in the collection. So spend a lot of extra time getting to know the piece, being able to play it, but then also choosing your tempo, choosing your phrasing and articulation, and just really um, smoothing it all out, holding on to some of those chords for an extra just split second before shifting so that you're not clipping notes all over the place as well, which just equals a slightly more mature and, and um, sensitive um, technique involved in, in playing the piece nicely. So really wonderful little work, extra time for it, but uh, very welcome in the collection. <laughs>